Hi everybody, welcome to a new Python tutorial. Today we're gonna talk about lists in Python. A list is a collection data type that is ordered, mutable and it allows duplicate elements. So let's have a closer look at lists and what you can do with them. First of all, a list is created with square brackets and within these brackets you put each element that you want separated by a comma. For example, let's put some strings in here, banana, uh, cherry, and an apple. And if we print this, then we see that all elements are printed. Now you can also create a, a new empty list with the list function. So my list two equals list. And if we print this, then we see that this creates an empty list and later on you can append items. A list allows for different data types. So for example, we can say that our list can contain an integer, a boolean and a string. That's all possible. And the list allows duplicate elements. So if we put in another apple here, that we s then we see that we have two apples now inside our list. Now, if you want to access an element, you do that by referring to the index. So let's say item equals my list. And then inside brackets, you specify the index. And note that the indices start at zero. So index zero is the first, the very first item, in this case, the banana. If we print the item, then we see this is the banana and index number one is the cherry. Index number two is the apple. And now if we uh, put in an index that is too large, what will happen? then we get an index error list index out of range. So be very careful with that. Now you can also specify a negative index. So minus one, this refers to the last item, in this case, the apple, and minus two is the second last item, and so on. Now, if you want to iterate over your list, you can do that simply with a for in loop for i in my list colon and then do something. In this case, I just want to, to print it. So then we see that for each element inside our list, we print it. And note that you don't have to call this i, you can call this also x or whatever you want. Now, if you want to check if an item is inside our, your list, you can do that with an if, and then uh, your item that you want to check, I'll say banana in my list, colon, and say let's print yes, and else print no. Now, if you run this, then we see that the banana is inside our list. So let's check if the lemon is no, the apple. Yes. So that's a very simple syntax to check if your index is inside your list. Now let's talk about some other useful methods that you can do with the list. First of all, if you want to check how many elements do you have inside your list, you can do that with the lang method. And now if we print this, and we see that we have three elements inside our list. Now if we want to append items, we can do that by my list append. And now let's append a lemon. And now print it we see that a new item, the lemon, got inserted at the at the very last at the end of the list. 
Now if we want to insert an item at a specific um, position, we can do that with the insert method. And now first we have to specify the index, let's say index number one, and then the item, let's say a blueberry, and then print it. And we see that at index number one, now we have the blueberry. Now if we want to remove items, we can do that with the pop method. Um, and this returns the last item and also removes it. So if we assign this to a variable and print it, and we see that now we got our apple back and if we print our list then we see that the apple is no longer in our list. Now we can also remove a specific element with the dot remove method. For example, let's remove the cherry then we see that the cherry got removed. Now what happens if we specify an item that is not inside our list? For example, if we have a typo here, then we get a value error, x not in list, so be careful here. We can also remove all elements with the clear method. So now we have an empty list. Um, some more useful things that you can do is, for example, you can um, reverse the list with the reverse method. So now um, the list is in reversed order. And you can also sort your list with the sort method. Um, maybe this, for example, gets clearer if we use numbers here. So let's say for two, three, one, minus one, minus five, ten. And if we sort this, then we see that it's now in ascending order. So um, note that the sort method um, sorts your list in place. So this changes your original list. Um, and if you don't want to have this changed, but rather create a new list, then you can do this by, with the built-in sorted method. New list equals sorted, and then your original list. And note that if you print your original list again, then you see this is still the same. And if you print the new list, then you see that this is now the new sorted list. Now, some useful trick if you want to create a new list with the same elements multiple times. So for example, I want a new list with five zeros in it. Then you can do it like this. So let's say I put in a zero and then times five. So if we print this, then we see that we have a new list with five zeros. And we can easily conquer two lists with the plus operator. So let's say I have another list equals two, one, two, three, four, five, and then we want a new list, so a new list equals my list plus my list two. And if we print this, then with a new list with both elements uh, with both lists inside it. So yeah, let's talk about slicing. Slicing is a very nice way to access subparts of your list with the colon. So for example, let's create a new list uh, with some numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
and let's create a new list and simply call it A and then inside brackets the so A equals and then my list and inside the brackets you specify the start index and the stop index so let's say for example start index 1 and stop index 5 and if we print this and we see we have a new list that goes from index 1 to index 5 and the last it, uh, the last index is excluded so it's at index 1 2 3 and index 4 so our list has all the numbers from 2 to 5 now if we don't specify a start index then it starts all the way from the beginning and if we don't specify a stop index then it goes all the way to the end and you also have an optional step index so and then I put in another colon and then the step index and by default it's one so let's say this goes all the way from the beginning to the end with a step one and if I put in a step two then it takes every second item and I can also uh, specify a negative index so this is a, sim uh, a nice trick to reverse your list now let's talk about copying a list so let's say let's call this list original and put in some fruits in here banana cherry and an apple now if I want to create a copy and I simply do it by assigning it to the original one then you have to be very careful so if I print the copy then I see that it it's the the same as our original list but now if I if I modify the copy what will happen is that it will also modify the original list so our example if I append a lemon and if I print the copy and I also print the original then we see that the original list now also has a lemon in it and this is because with this assignment both lists refer to the same list in inside the memory so um, yeah be very careful here and if you want to make an actual copy of your list you can do it with the dot copy method so now if we print then we see that the original method uh, the original list is still the same and we can also do it with the list function and as argument we use the original list so this also makes an actual copy and as third option we can use th uh, slicing if I just use a colon here so this means slicing all the way from beginning to the end this also makes an actual copy now um, as a last um, nice little trick I want to show you an advanced technique that is called list comprehension so that's an elegant and fast way to create a new list from an existing list um, with one line for example if we have a list with numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and we want to create a list with uh, squared numbers then we can do it like this inside brackets we say i times i for i in a or maybe let's call this my list and now if we print my list and print 
the second list, then we see that a new list got created where each element is squared. And the syntax is you have your expression and then a for in loop over your uh, list. So in note, like uh, the same with iterating, you don't have to, to call this i, you can also call this x, uh, and then also use the x here. So that's a very simple and elegant way to create a new list with another with some expression in one line. So that's all I wanted to show you about lists. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and now feel more comfortable working with lists. And see you in the next tutorial where we talk about tuples and Python.